Welcome back, and uh, we have Tim Alexander. Tim, what? Ah, we don't have Tim. Oh, okay, very good. Let's see. Well, what's happening in our schedule? Oh, okay. That's a little unexpected, of course. Who knows? I hope they're not having extreme weather there. Um, good. Let's see if we can bring on Chris Harris, our nuclear expert, then. I want to run over some of the uh, latest news items and uh, open up the open. And, of course, I'm going to continue with uh, some of the first off, dealing in the first segment here with a uh, continuation of our, you know, run through A to Z and Z to A on nutraceuticals. Um, start off with uh, BH4 Biopterin. This is the tetrahydrobiopterin. By the way, this isn't a bottle homeopathic. It's not. We keep on getting questions on that. When you combine it with our uh, semethyl as the basis to reverse depression, usually most people are pulling out of depression in three to five days. Hello? Ah, we have Tim. Okay, Tim, I guess it sounded like your phone was initially disconnected. I guess we're, no, you had we're so lucky. Number. I've been ah, sitting here waiting okay, for there. your call. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. Okay, what are the top news items you're following, Tim? What uh, What's burning on the on the news desk of <laughs> Tim Alexander and your blog, Europe Business? Yeah, well, uh, there's several interesting stories that I've covered uh, yesterday and today. Uh, uh, the Zionism linked to the Egyptian army, and uh, you know, the, they this Muslim Brotherhood versus the army. Uh, it, it's it's another Syrian style bloodletting and destabilization in the Middle East. Uh, we've got uh, U.S. Senator Carl Levine calling for military strikes on Syria, which is insane. You know, give the guy a parachute and an M16 and kick his butt out over Syria and let him go and fight. Uh, and be well, sure well first off, it's, uh, you, you gotta, the first thing you got to do whenever you go into a fight, I'll give you an example. If you walk into uh, Compton, um, you know, Los Angeles, you know, district, which is kind of dangerous to walk in there. Even the police that are well armed with flak jackets on won't kind of go throw their weight around Compton. You don't walk up to a gang of 60 guys with razor blades, sawed off shotguns, machine guns, machetes, etc., and then flick a cigarette butt in somebody's face and smack somebody in the head with a baseball bat and expect to walk out alive. Well, that's what's going to happen to America <clears throat> if we do something stupid like start a war in the Middle East. Now, let me just give you a little array, and you, I want you to add to it because you're an expert on military hardware and tactics. In fact, you're probably the top expert we have on the show on any time is the military hardware tactics and geopolitical analysis of how bad things are and how bad things will get if you don't know your enemy. Um, number one, Syria has all the chemical weapons that, quote, Saddam Hussein supposedly had. Number two, it has the Gerald Super Gun, which is the largest uh, ballistic gun in the world that can actually launch a Toyota into space or put a, a, literally a... Yeah, you know how they make that, it? That's, yeah, and uh, you, you, may, you had a really interesting story, so I just want to give the list and you can oh, add okay. some more details because okay, people ahead, find it like this. The next thing is that they have the advanced bioweapons from biopreparat from the Soviet Union because the Soviet Union never went away. People need to realize, and I use my, maybe my best or worst Russian accent, all we do in Russia is we change hats. We are now, <laughs> we are now market communist. Okay, so when we look at Putin, we look at the oligarchs, these fools think how the Soviet Union went away. No, it didn't. It's retooled. They're building 100 new bases in Russia. The Russians basically are on the move. Uh, they're going to yank their young people out of their drunken and their opioid stupor because a large number of the young people in Russia are completely out of it on either vodka or opium, heroin. Uh, and they need to smarten up. But what will happen is the Russians have got a very small, but probably the best outside of the American and Israeli, the best operating special forces on the planet. They have the most advanced physicists on the planet by a large margin, and their weapon systems literally have gotten every chink in our armor and weakness that we have. They have a solution to disable, disarm, and destroy us. Whether well, it's the uh, Topol air missile. They have gone into uh, a third world uh, zonked out mode like we have. They're still actually... Right. 
you know, developing stuff. I, right, I and, and if you actually look at their... I that much today. Right, and, if, and by the way, if you look at their educational system, their high school graduates have better math skills and science skills than our bachelor's degree graduates in America. Uh, we have a big problem. We have a, what's called a an information and an intellectual gap with Russians. And to say a Russian that doesn't drink vodka like Mr. Putin is a very dangerous man indeed is to say one of my jokes is that uh, God allowed the Scots to develop single malt liquor so they wouldn't run the world. And God allowed the Russians to invent vodka so they, <clears throat> so they wouldn't run the world. Uh, so, you know, what we have is a situation where... First off, there is already is a no-fly zone over Syria. It's called the S-300 system that already was and is being delivered. The S-400, which is on the naval ships for the Russians, I mean, the idea that you can just kind of start air bombing Syria, this is not Libya, and uh, and the Russians have only one base in the Middle East, and it's a TARDIS. There's no way it was the Chinese. Or the Ru- in fact, if the Russians even backed out, the Chinese on their own are going to get enraged. They built well, the they, they Kyber Pass. Well, they co-built the S-400 system. Uh, they use a right, different number, they, but it, it, they, they co-built uh, the S-400 system with Russia. <laughs> Right, and so the Chinese, by the way, they manufacture now, most of the new Russian jets are being built on Chinese soil by Russian engineers designing them, and the Chinese are retooling like crazy. Now, they don't want to go to war with America. They want to sell stuff to America. They want to buy America. They're buying all the theaters because they love popcorn and movies. People don't realize if we did it properly, our natural allies would be Russia and China, just like they were during the American Revolution. In fact, if it wasn't for Russian naval ships off our coast during the American Revolution and the War of 1812, the British would have retaken, well, the British would have retaken the, the, America. In the Civil War, it was Tsar Alexander II that sent Ru- right. uh, two Russian fleets, one off the Pacific uh, by California and one off the East Coast, that stopped right. Britain uh, from from basically inter- intervening and France from intervening and, and permanently splitting the United States up into North and South. And uh, right. we owe the Russians a, a debt of gratitude for that. But, uh, right. you know... Uh, I, I keep abreast of Chinese military developments, and I look at some of the stuff they're doing, and I say, oh, my God, you know, it's across the board. Well, they have such an enormous number of scientists and engineers that they're cranking out. The vast majority mm-hmm. of engineers graduating in the world today are Chinese. And, well, you, you know, know what, uh, I listen to this statistic. If you graduate Jim? in the United States as an engineer, you're lucky if you get a job, period. Well, let, let me explain how many engineers are. There's more engineers with an engineering degree graduating just in Beijing. We're not talking about Xingdao or, or Zhongdin or, or yeah. Shanghai. Just, just Beijing. Just Beijing. There's more engineers graduating than all our engineers and all our PhDs in any hard science in America. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And now, right. listen to this. Almost all their politicians, when the politi- Chinese politicians meet, 90% of the politicians from America are lawyers, and 90% of the Chinese politicians are engineers. Yeah, and that says duh. a lot about everything. <laughs> yeah, duh. What was the, what uh, was the, know, the, uh, the uh, uh, Shakespeare, I forget which one, that said, uh, let's, let's hang all the lawyers. And I have good friends that are lawyers, but I... <laughs> Uh, well, you know, it, it, well, what's 10,000 lawyers at the bottom of the sea? The system uh, too yeah. much, unfortunately. But yeah. We, yeah. We, we, I'll tell you, we're about to go on a break, but I'll tell you an interesting story when we come back, how Chinese military technology changed the world about 30 years ago permanently. And Really? Yeah. When we come back, we need to start dissecting this because when we use the word Zionist, we're not talking about biblical Zionism. We're talking about satanic, globalist Zionism, which is a dialectic of evil. Different thing. Welcome back, and... uh, uh, just uh, to make a comment back about uh, Senator Levin making a statement about uh, bombing and arming the uh, Syrian Free Army, we should actually fly in and talk to Bashar al-Assad and try to make a, a deal with Bashar to make sure it stabilizes the situation. As the Russians and Chinese have said, this isn't going to end well. The idea of arming terrorists who've already made statements that they're going to bomb American jets with man of 
Stinger and other missiles from ground-to-air missiles. And they've said this in Europe, in fact, Europeans are freaked out that if they supply arms in countries like France, Italy, etc., Germany, they're freaked out that the European uh, NATO are planning on arming uh, groups that have already made statements that they're going to take out is European jets with these armaments. And they've already made public statements, yeah, <coughs> well, thanks for the weapons. Well, there's an element in Israel that wants that because they want... Uh, the West to fight their enemies and by getting the most insane idiots and giving them modern technology, they'll do insane things with it and in, in so doing they will uh, cause every, everybody to hate their enemies but, but what they forget is they are target number one and they are a very small uh, uh, country which makes a great big target uh, of opportunity for their enemies um, Here's what I think is going to happen, which is a little different than twists in that. Uh, and I've talked about this with Bill Salas. Uh, Israel is 51st state. It's run by people, what I call communist, sabotean, Satanists. Uh, the, the, the state of Israel is very, very unbiblical. For the, the rabbis there even support the idea of cloning uh, for, uh, you know, descendants of homosexual of couples. People, but they have some really rotten No, they got some, they got some good people, but they got some very bizarre ideas. And the globalist, the state of Israel was founded as a fig tree without fruit. It's not biblical. It's Sabbatean, which is basically following Sheptitsvi and Jacob Frank. Well, the there's a tiny are, amount, and it's growing very keepers. quickly. Uh, yeah, there's a tiny, well, it doesn't, wouldn't matter anyway. That's not the key issue. Yeah, it's a, there's a tiny segment of Messianic uh, Christians that are growing rapidly, many of them returning from the Pale of Settlement of Eastern Europe and from Russia. And when they convert, whether they were uh, Khazarians or whatever, they're converting to become Messianic Christians. It wouldn't matter if you're Mongolian. If you become a Messianic Christian, well, you're true. a Messianic Christian. So the that's point true. is, what what's happening is, we've got a state where the Jews are rapidly realizing, without as, as Avi Lipkin says, without America's quote, Christian revival, Israel is done. It's it's like the Pillsbury Doughboy. It's finished. Um, <clears throat> what we really need to see happen is that Israel. Uh, we need to realize it's a 51st state. We also need to make sure it, it, it integrates its military armaments with America. This idea that Israel can just go off like a, like a firecracker and do whatever the hell it pleases is not safe. But we have a, an unsafe president in Obama. He should have been impeached uh, several years ago from his behavior in Libya, which is basically start war. The current bill uh, that's before the uh, Congress to impeach him based on arming the uh, terrorists in uh, Syria uh, he's already probably done more than enough to cross that red line. And uh, my impression is with Carl Levin when he's saying this, Carl Levin's out of his mind. Yes, the Israelis may need to preemptively attack, but you don't go and just arm these guys that are our potential enemies, or well, you know they're going to turn it, these it, weapons it, on it Israel. It down to the issue, Bill, of who <laughs> controls this country. And, and is it, uh, exactly. and should it be a small, tiny, extreme element of, uh, of well, uh, uh, Zionist Jews? And I'm not all Jews, just as well, an extreme well, element. Uh, who drive well, and we're not even going to call it, I don't even want to use the word Jew. Should it be America first? Regardless well, no, let, let's of call what, what your ancestry or religion what Jesus would call him is. What Jesus would call him is the synagogue of Satan. He wouldn't call him Jews. The word Jew, if That's you look true. back to the Hebrew, means praiser. The, the reason why they were at the front of the of the of the band of Israelis going around, uh, you know, the walls of Jericho is because they were the musicians. They were the praisers. God says, "I you shall proceed forth into my kingdom with praise and uh, and and thanks." And they, actually, the reason why Jesus came out of the Jews is because God said, "I will bring my people back out of praise." So what He's doing is basically a word picture that. That that the Jews need to become Jews. They need to start praising God. They need to stop being sabotaging Satanists. They need to return and accept Yeshua as the Father in the flesh, the incarnation of the Creator God, in the flesh. Not as the Jehovah Witnesses teach, as the, the Archangel Michael that's incarnate. Not as the brother of Jesus with Mormons. Not as some kind of avatar like Buddha or anybody else, but as the incarnation of the uh, infinite Creator God. Now. That infinity is not all in contained in just Jesus, but he is, quote, the physical incarnation in man of the creator of the universe, and therefore he's preexistent before the universe existed. That's why he said, before Abraham was, I am. In other words, he is the I am. He is the preexistent one who was there. God. Yeah. 
Right. Now, what, uh, we, what let, we need to start me, dealing with let that. Let me give you that, a, we, an example, and this is what I alluded to right before we, we went to the break, of um, kind of unintended consequences or how things right. really kind of spring from one thing and then lead to something else. Okay. Um, I, I linked the story about Saudi ballistic missiles aimed at Israel and also at Iran. Now, these missiles are Chinese-made IRBMs. IRBM means Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile. And uh, they're not intercontinental, but they'll, they can go, you know, well over 1,000 miles. And they have Pakistani-manufactured nuclear weapons. Now, this, these are Saudi missiles made in China with hydrogen bombs may and and regular nuclear bombs made in Pakistan now the, the the Saudis paid for a large part of the Pakistani nuclear program it was you know a Muslim uh, bomb and in right. Return, in fact, uh, Avi Lippin gave me the satellite photos. Clear warheads. Now, right. So Avi Lippin gave me the actual satellite photos, like 12, 13 years ago, yeah. from the Israeli Defense Force and ImageSat, which, by the way, the Israeli Image Satellite System and space-based weapons platforms are right up there with ours. So yeah, anybody who thinks well, that they, Israel they is just like a nothing from us, but yeah, they, and they're good. Well, they, they upgraded they got, though. They you got to never themselves. underestimate the Israelis. So oh, here's my I, point: I, is I don't believe me. I, I've, in the Salaya Oasis, I've dealt with their generals. And, and scientists, and, and I have a lot of respect for them. Uh, they're politicians, right. no, but I don't respect most right, politicians. But, but here's the point, and there's two sites, one near the uh, the, the giant uh, military base, which is a $50 billion base, and the chief engineer managing the construction of that was none other than Tim Osman, otherwise known as Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Number two, number two, a, five, a couple hundred miles north of Salai Oasis in Riyadh, they have another missile base aimed directly at not only Israel but at Iran. And I've seen the satellite photos. I have them. So the fact is, the uh, when they say that oh, Israel's not a nuclear power, Saudi just has enough nuclear weapons to get themselves in trouble. Well, they By the way, Iran has annihilate no both Iran and Israel. You remember, right. uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to, to wipe out either, particularly Israel, because it's so small and so concentrated. But let, let me explain why this is so important. Okay, the Saudis paid for the, the Pakistani nuclear program. In return, they got some nukes. Now, the story on the Chinese IRBMs, which, by the way, were originally liquid fuel. They've been converted to solid fuel, which is far better for uh, military purposes. But the story right. is most interesting. More than anything, it was the Chinese selling IRBMs uh, to the Arabs in the 1980s to Saudi Arabia that caused the deal between the, the Zionist-influenced West uh, and, and China in return for no further ses military sales and no nuclear weapons sales. The West began shipping in yeah, the entire Tim, I want you to repeat that when you come back. We're on break. Plant with the you want to repeat that when you come back? China. China. Tim, Tim, you and want to repeat that when you come back because we're on air? Uh, fair? Oh, because that's shit. Okay. So. Great products. Audience out there, listen um, up real important. Probably the most important statement you've made maybe in years, uh, Tim, is what you just said just before the break. I want you to repeat it and complete it. Yeah. Because this is the fulcrum point as to why our industry is being stripped from us, why this game over nuclear weapons, uh, if you want to call it proliferation, is tied directly to the deindustrialization of the West and why China is receiving carte blanche our most advanced technology even full factories being shipped there and why they're leapfrogging forward uh, literally to destroy yeah, well, our this, industrial this future was, this was the beginning and and i'm a historian and an analyst and a strategist and uh, like many people i've looked at what's happening in china and i know people that have gone to china have relatives there and so forth and, you know, uh, it is the greatest mass transference of wealth in human history from the West to China. Okay, now why? Okay, well, these Chinese IRBMs that they sold in the 1980s, just the Saudis. Remember, for a long time, the Saudis have been sitting on this enormous pot of oil, which is liquid money. And... Um, the Saudis also paid for a large part of the Pakistani nuclear weapons program. The other part was basically paid for by China. And uh, 
the Chinese or the Chinese sold these at that time liquid field intermediate range ballistic missiles, which could hit anywhere in Israel or anywhere in the Middle East, to uh, to Israel, and that set off all kind of alarm bells because it not only did it endanger Israel, it also meant that the Chinese were prepared to sell their advanced military technology for enough bucks. And uh, also once uh, everybody figured out, or I say everybody, the intelligence people figured out that, hey, uh, you know, these things are, are, are not too terribly, they're, they're fairly expensive, uh, but they're well worth it if you put a nuke, uh, a nuclear warhead on them. And they were getting the warheads and did get warheads from, from Pakistan. Okay. So that caused a deal uh, between the Zionist influence West and, and China. And this was well before the collapse of the Soviet Union. But even at this time, the Chinese were not so much a puppet of the Soviet Union. The Chinese were, were growing. And they were growing in terms of military technology even then. Okay, in return for no further cess sales, now they, they, they had an agreement to maintain and upgrade the, the, the IRBMs they sold, but in return for no further cess sales and no nuclear weapons being sold by China, the West began shipping in entire manufacturing plants with the latest technology to mainland China. And, I mean, these, these plants there, the Chinese didn't build them. Hell, we built them. It's our technology, okay? A European and American, Canadian, tech, Australian technology. And also the deal meant that we were begin purchasing most of our consumer goods from the People's Republic of China. If you don't believe that, think back 30, 20, 30 years ago, if you went to a mall, almost everything was made in America. Today, less than 5% is made in America. Most of it is made in so, China or some other you know, third world place. And by the way, what people need to understand is that, uh, is, is, uh, Joel Skousen, which I agree, most of the other analysts and most other networks and shows don't agree with Joel. I agree with Joel 100%. Uh, Russia and China are being prepared for a thermonuclear attack at a future date on America. Um, they're transferring technology started in the late 40s, early 50s, where they even gave Canadian nuclear materials to Russia, nuclear technologies, even advanced uh, weapon systems for targeting the image with the I had a uh, professor with in the Iridium Satellite a Project back in the who, 1990s. Who knew, he, he, he even <laughs> could tell you exactly where the, the plants, the entire plants were shipped to Russia through the Belovostok labeled mm. agricultural uh, implements. Equipment, exactly. Yeah. Even advanced Advanced targeting technologies through the Iridium Satellite Project, where which is the uh, you know, Leo Lorth orbit satellites. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and those, by the way, those were allowing China and Russia to target American cities. But, but yeah. let me finish this. Okay. Uh, yeah. What all this began once we, be, we we shipped our manufacturing plants there, and the deal was you're going to build everything. You're going to you're going to manufacture everything. Our shoes, our clothes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everything at Walmart, everything in every shopping center. Uh, you're going to get uh, you know eighty percent of everything. Okay. That deal. Uh, of course, it, everybody benefited from the deal at the top. The, we, the, uh, the Americans and the Canadians and the Europeans, the average person, of course, we were the losers. Now, this was the greatest mass transference of wealth in human history, bar none. There's never in human history has anything like this ever happened. And it, and by, it was by the just way, a the other side, uh, event. And the reason, once again, was tied to the West doing Israel's bidding. That was the nucleus of, uh, of all this. And of course, it's led to the denuding of most domestic industrial capacity in America, Canada, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, etc., and the gradual and now accelerated destruction of the middle class in all those nations. Now, the other side of it is that China was to buy our debt instruments and our treasury notes, and if they tried to pull back, the deal was off. Now, what's happening now is that deal is starting to fly apart, and we're seeing a number of transnational U.S. and British and European-based corporations pulling their business from China. The Chinese and are moving getting it big India for their and Indonesia. Napoleon said, let China sleep, for when she awakes, the world will tremble. No, no, I'm talking about the opposite of that. 
China is now getting the screws put to them because transnational well, U.S. And, and foreign corporations are starting to pull business. China is not is a paper tiger. They're they're shipping it to India. They're shipping it to Indonesia. They're shipping it to the Philippines. And well, that's, the fastest that's growing that's nation where this is yeah, happening yeah. is Mexico. Mexico. Let me finish. Mexico is the fastest growing industrialized nation in the world now. Where if you go there, you go. Wow, you're just blown away by all the new plants, nuclear plants. Do you know that 95% of the new certified nuclear plant construction in North America is being built in Mexico? Yeah, and 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 Mexico. they also chop off people's heads uh, in their drug wars constantly. And stick well, the drug war is part of the game. The Remember, world, the, the, you know? the drug war is to, is to, is to supply money for the globalists. I want to run through some news and ask some questions of Chris here. Fukushima groundwater shows record radiation levels, and this is from the uh, what's called Huffington Post. And it talks about this here. This is July 9th. Uh, Japan may rest, uh, restart several reactors shut down by the Fukushima re- nuclear crisis a year, uh, uh, in about a year, a senior regulator said in an interview. On Tuesday, the day after new safety rules went into effect designed to avoid a repeated disaster. At the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant north of Tokyo, said the world's worst atomic disaster since Chernobyl, which is much worse than Chernobyl by thousands of times. The situation took a turn for the worse as radiation levels in the groundwater soared, suggesting highly toxic toxic materials from the plant are now close to the Pacific Ocean. No, no. What's happening is 400 tons per day are being dumped in the ocean. And their underground storage depots have been leaking like crazy, and they know it. And what's happening is the Pacific Ocean is slowly being turned into what I call the plutonium sea. It's being turned into a dead zone. Um, And I have to think of that prophetic warning, uh, and and I just want to go back a little bit. When I was a little boy, eight and a half, I had a near-death experience. And one of the things I was shown, without giving the whole story, because people can get my book, Clay and Iron, when it comes out with a new edition, was I was shown... A fireballs all over the world, but there's a lot more over America. And those things, I thought at first was like a light show. Hey, God, you showed me this light show, and they turned into, they turned into mushroom clouds. They're preparing, the globalists are preparing America for a nuclear firestorm. They're preparing to strip America and its middle class first to disarm us, to turn us into a vassal nation to globalist bankers. And then once they have us pinned down with people like Obama, and we've got Sharia law, and we've got all this other crap, then they are going to turn, after we've pissed off the world, Russia and China, who naturally could be our allies, I mean, rather than their enemies, we could have environmental deals with Russia and China so we can't have industrial espionage. We don't just ship plants. We can improve work conditions for people in these countries because they're decent people. They don't want us to ship all our business and then have them being paid so little that the Foxconn plants are jumping off roofs or committing suicide. So... And in Japan, 60 million Japanese now are so radioactive that it's dangerous for them to have children. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> the level of radiation now, two and a half years in, is far higher than it has ever been before. And of course, the uh, latest too is that the, um, uh, the director of the Fukushima plant, Masuda Yoshida, died from radiation. So he was uh, a real hero. Too. Say, oh, you, now, he was. Welcome back, and uh, Chris, you had some interesting comments on the break that the current system they have, they don't turn into solid waste, but they're also not selectively removed, they're selectively not removing from the radioactive stream some isotopes like strontium and plutonium, plutonium-239, the most dangerous radioactive element known to man, Um, and we also know that the uh, radioactive waste is pumping cesium-134, which is a shorter-acting uh, isotope, into these leaking the tanks. So when cesium is exposed, uh, animals are exposed like gerbils or hamsters to, they develop breast cancer. So we could expect breast cancer rates to increase dramatically. We expect because of the analog to magnesium and potassium, mitochondriopathies that will cause immune system failure, uh, brain cancer, breast cancer, and other areas where potassium and magnesium are highly concentrated, and cardiac arrhythmias. And what's interesting, the rate of stroke and cardiac arrhythmias increased 3,500% in Japan. So stroke rates after Fukushima Daiichi went up 3,500%. Well, what well, we discussed, I know, last week is things that I'm learning new all the time about their uh, so-called advanced liquid processing uh, system. 
which they really did cheap out on it and did not put the elements necessary to remove many different um, uh, elements. And really, they they've opted for the easy one, which was cesium to remove. But as you uh, as you correctly pointed out, that they're pumping the uh, residue from these uh, from the uh, system into tanks, but unfortunately they're leaking, and so really, I don't know what, what you're actually doing is you're actually spreading cesium, you're concentrating cesium, and then you're spreading <clears> it in the tanks. So, so, but, but the bad part, of course, the strontium, which is uh, able to hitch a longer ride in seawater than cesium would, would, it would be able to do. So what you're seeing are the other elements that are not as easily uh, uh, re- removed or detected until until uh, it's until it's too late, of course. So and basically, what's happening? The world is being poisoned to death, and I predict that within five to ten years, it will be as radioactive in California, in Vermont, and in Eastern Europe and Western Europe as it is in Japan now. And like the movie Children of Men that was brought aboard a decade ago, human beings no longer will be able to reproduce safely to have normal children except by submitting their gametes, which is, of course, a globalist plan, part of Agenda 21, which is why they're not doing anything about it. <clears throat> Tim, I want to turn it back to you now. Talk about Lake Megantic. This is a big disaster. And if it was in America, there were over 60 people that died with this oil train that went off the tracks. We also have the, <clears throat> the wheels coming off the entire southern Europe in terms of the economy. Uh, Portugal went under. Uh, Greece has got days away from disaster again. Uh, we have the economic plagues, as you have here, nine plagues that are collapsing capitalism, uh, strikes and protests and mass layoffs in Greece, uh, the uh, Clarman clarity, the government still can't allow failure, then we are indeed close to collapse. And we're seeing also the price of gold now is so low that two mines in Australia are actually closing because it's, it costs more money uh, to get the gold to out of the ground. ground. Right, and, so, and then, of course this is pre-disaster. And uh, we have now so many prisons in California jammed to the gunnels. There's actually protests in the prison because they won't build new prisons, and they have them way overpopulated. Well, and even the exercise room of a, a hunger strike in California. You, know, you have to remember, America, the land of the free. We have more people in prison per population than any country on earth by far, and that includes a delightful, wonderful place called North Korea. Right. And of course, America, we, we've made a business that, that, out of that, it. We have we have for profit prisons, private prisons. Now. Right. Now, and I'm just going to say it as an American: the first solution to a problem is to face the disgusting facts. As a in the office of a apostle prophet, I'm going to just say this: America is disgusting, like ancient Israel. America imprisons its population, starts foreign wars with no uh, good excuse except globalism, promulgates and spreads nuclear and other advanced technologies to promote warfare, tries to create the background template for the Mark of the Beast, which is a biometric world system, which we're doing, which is why they're chasing Snowden all over the place, because he exposed not just the fact that we're snooping on everybody their phone calls, they're building a SIM copy of you in their worldwide database so they can control you because their next currency they want to replace the current one is a biometric one, which the Bible says is the Mark of the Beast. And I've said this before, and I want to say it again because I think I'm the only one saying this. The Mark of the Beast comes from America, and the false prophet is not a religious leader like people think. It's a U.S. president. And the best candidate ever is the current idiot in the White House who is clearly not a Christian. Are you talking about the Christian. teleprompter reader in chief? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> the thing is, he's not just a puppet. This man is an evil collaborator with Satan. In fact, if you believe in reverse speech, and we'll bring in some reverse speech people to talk about this, if you actually listen to the reverse speech in this guy, he, he literally is saying in some of his speeches, thank you, Satan, thank you, Satan, when he says uh, something about uh, one of his first main mantras he was doing in the first election. What you have to understand is, we're at the, the culmination of history. America is being prepared, like the daughter of Babylon, to be burnt with nuclear fire and to be destroyed. America is That's like true. ancient Israel before it fell, where, the, where you know, David built up the kingdom. Solomon had this giant kingdom, and it got divided after Solomon fell into the northern and southern kingdoms. The northern kingdom was hauled off in very short order afterward, and a hundred and some years later, Babylon took away Israel and uh, Samaria. 
So what we have is a situation where America is about to fall. And it's going to fall because of corruption. It's not going to fall because America is weak. It's going to fall because America is evil. America has a potential to do good, and it's done great good to help nations all over the world. It's even brought, quote, the gospel. But it's also not acting as a good... You can't be a good Christian and tell people about Jesus and then do the exact opposite that Jesus would have done. You In can't. Texas, they had a big uh, thing about abortion. And many of the pro-abortion people, they actually actually were cheering, they were saying, hail Satan. Hail, hail Satan. Satan. And I mean, it's like, what? And now some of these abortion people are talking about post-abortions, post-birth abortions. In other words, a child that's up to three years old, the mother can decide to kill it, emphasize. And that that's okay. Uh, not on this planet, not in this well, universe, look, look. not under God, yeah, but, uh, it's not. Here, here's what's going to happen. Um, and what God has promised, and I, I believe a little different uh, theology, but it's based on logic, because I'm very good at logic, is that the rapture is not the rapture of good being taken out to heaven. The rapture is evil. Jesus said, where the vulture is, or the, if you want to call vulture, the eagle, there is the body. He's saying is, I will cut those days short because I'm going to take evil out, the tares out of the harvest. I'm going to remove them blade by blade of the tares out of the harvest of wheat. And God is literally going to, to literally bind them together by their own behavior, put them in underground lairs, put them in places where they're going to be equally exposed to destruction. And God is going to speak just like he did to the ancient Israelites uh, that were Christian believers in the first century to say, get thee out of Jerusalem. So when Titus came to destroy the city of Jerusalem, and there was 1.7 million crosses where the, the Jews that remained there were literally crucified, none of them were believers. They were off in Petra and elsewhere. So <clears throat> I want your comments too, Chris. Uh, well, you know, we, we talked about that... Um you know, they they were definitely saying "Hail Satan" at that. There's, Tim was uh, was absolutely correct. I was I was appalled at that because, um, you know, that 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 itself speaks to I don't know, that speaks truth to me. You know, that's just well, what, what we got to do is we got to stop being what we call nice Christians. Uh, one thing I'm not is I'm not nice. When people try to say I'm nice, it's like you're trying to butter me up because you want something. <laughs> uh, Doctor Deagle's loving. I will serve the most. I'll get. I'll die for you. I will suffer slings and arrows and pain and suffering so that your carcass and your soul doesn't go to the bowels of hell and destruction, which is annihilation. <clears throat> but I'm not nice. Nice meaning I'm not going to twist the truth and lie to you so that you'll like me. Okay? I'm going to tell you straight up whether or not it's bad doctrine in your stupid church or it's bad well, attitude. That's not really nice, can... by the way. Right. Well, it, 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 know, that, that's it, a mistaken concept of nice. That that uh, somehow well, that's what you, people you believe, sugarcoat though. everything to the point where you're lying to someone to make them feel good, and you're not telling them the truth. God is the well, truth. Well, that describes a lot of the, that describes a lot of the pastors now in the feel good churches. Well, you're right. It says in the Bible in Titus, you know, they shall take, uh, you know, leaders that will tickle their ears at that time. And they will believe a false doctrine. Well, guess what? We're there. You're right. We've got so California folks. prisons on on strike. Luxembourg PM resigns over spying scandal. Yeah, a little tiny you Luxembourg. Know, little... The prime minister get caught the spying scandal, and he resigned. Why doesn't our president? Because he's a minion of Satan himself. And if, he, if the Republican Party doesn't do their job because they think it's a good political move to leave the idiot in chief in the White House. God help us if he goes to martial law with an airborne plague or a war or whatever else. God help us. Literally, the only thing from us and the devil in the deep blue sea is our creator, God. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Tim. Back tomorrow with Firing Line. 